All right. So um, as I mentioned, the academy it doesn't really focus on uh, project planning or broader management issues. Um, so we have another academy for that. Okay. Um, but one really important thing that I want to highlight at the bottom here, um, the academy works under the assumption that you have previous experience in DHIS2 configuration. This doesn't necessarily mean tracker programs, but understanding you know, what the maintenance app is and how to create data elements, for example, um, having created at minimum an event program before, um, because we kind of work through some of those concepts a bit quicker um, in this academy, and we review them briefly, um, but we don't get into the same level of detail we would if we're introducing them for the first time. Um, so if you feel as we're going through some of the material that you know um, there are concepts that you haven't really heard of before, um, then, then you know you can let us know. We won't really have a ton of time necessarily to go through them, but we can kind of see um, the best way to help you. Um, uh, if we can maybe point you to some resources that you could have a look at, for example, um, to try and get up to speed um, with some of the information that we're presenting over the next couple sessions, because each session really builds upon itself. Um, and, and it's going to be kind of uh, challenging to kind of keep up if, if you're um, behind on one of the concepts. All right. All right, so we can just talk about kind of the broad learning goals and the learning objectives um, for this academy. So kind of broadly, this academy is, is really about um, the increasing the ability to describe specific uh, tracker features and increasing the ability to configure specific tra tracker features. Now, there's a lot more kind of detail around this, but just broadly speaking, this is kind of what we're aiming to do um, within the global DHIS2 community. Um, when we look at what we want you to be able to do by the end of the academy, um, so be able to configure these tracker programs within DHIS2, um, also configure the correct user access and authorities um, related to accessing tracker programs, and also be able to supplement these tracker programs um, for the use of some of these additional configuration features. So program rules, program indicators, and program notifications are kind of the big ones that come to mind. All right. And, and we're hoping by the end you can achieve this um, at some degree. And of course, you know, this is meant to be kind of a continuous learning. So as I mentioned, you know, you might not learn everything you need to exactly for your specific use case um, at this time, but we're hoping that we give, we give you broad principles that you can build upon. It makes it a lot easier for you to kind of apply this um, when you try this on your own in your own specific use cases. All right, so if we look at some of the specific learning objectives, what we're going to cover, and we'll also go over the agenda um, in, in quite a bit of detail. Um, we will uh, define the tracker data model in DHIS2. That's kind of the first thing we're going to cover in uh, tomorrow's session. Um, for those of you who went through some of the other courses or have some uh, previous training um, in DHIS2, you'll know that the aggregate model, uh, there's a model for aggregate um, metadata and data as we refer to it, as well as the event kind of uh, metadata and data. And we'll be working through the tracker specifics. Um, sorry, here my bottom bar keeps popping up. Um, we'll also look at applying that tracker data model to a couple of different use cases. Um, so we'll look specifically at you know, how this uh, model affects um, you know, different ways, uh, different modalities of, of tracker programs that can be built in DHIS2. Um, we will actually go through the process of creating a tracker program and you'll have the opportunity to create a, a tracker program. It will be based on a, a use case that we're providing to you um, in, this, in this kind of um, environment. Um, we'll also talk about um, creating and uh, modifying user roles and user groups um, in DHIS2 and combine this with this principle called sharing settings. Hopefully this is uh, familiar to you. If you have some experience with events, um, you'll know that, uh, or, or even yeah, aggregate data sets, um, these sharing settings are quite a critical part um, of, of providing access to various parts um, of your system in DHIS2. Okay. Um, we'll also be looking at a concept called program access levels. Um, I'll describe that a bit more later on, um, but there's this concept that allows you to basically do some interesting things with um, who can access the program, depending on you know, which, um, which organization units in your hierarchy they can search. Um, and then we'll look at creating program rules, indicators, and notifications um, in DHIS2. And we will spend a fair amount of time on this um, in the sessions that we have uh, um, allocated for these topics. All right. So um, before I continue any further, I want to have a look at the agenda here. So, so this is the agenda that was uh, shared with you and sent out to you um, previously. Um, so I'm just gonna go through the various sessions. And of course, if there are any questions or anything um, about the content, um, feel free to um, you know, just use the raise hand function and uh, we'll, we'll try to address those as best we can. 
All right. Um, so today, as I mentioned, we're just going to kind of go through um, some of the logistics of the academy itself. Um, right now, we're going through the overview, um, and, and we'll do a, a bit of an introduction as well. Um, we'll introduce you to the learning platform. So for those of you who haven't had the opportunity to look at the Moodle or sign up for Moodle, we'll just walk through those instructions. Um, and also the, the DHIS2 systems that we'll be using, um, at least uh, for, for the first part of the course, um, get you to sign into those. And, and anyone who has not yet joined Slack um, as well. So Slack is a messaging system we can use um, both during and after the sessions if you have any questions. Um, and unlike the Zoom chat, it won't just go away um, when this closes. So it's useful for kind of maintaining that history um, of questions if we're not able to address them immediately, for example. Um, on, uh, we'll also actually on day one, uh, take a little bit of a group photo. Um, so we'll just get you to turn your webcams on. That's not on the agenda here, but uh, I think we have enough time. We, we won't keep you during the entire all allocated time today, I think, um, because this will be uh, you know a shorter session today. All right. On the second day, so tomorrow, um, we're going to get into kind of this, the beginning of the content, and we're just going to jump right into it um, and discuss the tracker data model. So, you know, um, for those of you who are a bit familiar with the event data model or even the aggregate data model, you know, there's very specific kind of DHIS2 terminology we use, and we map this to kind of real life, um, you know, constants or materials or um, use cases. Um, that allow us to build things inside of DHIS2. And the main principle to kind of get around here is that, you know, we generally don't just jump from receiving a set of requirements or data collection tools or indicators and just go in DHIS2 and make them. We can kind of have a process of kind of thinking through um, what makes sense um, before we do that. And, and we just want to discuss that a little bit, both in terms of your data collection uh, methods and modalities, as well as some of your outputs as well and how they kind of affect your initial design um, of your program. Um, and then we'll then do a bit of a, an exercise um, on, on kind of, you know, applying this model to some use cases um, to allow you to kind of get familiar with the terminologies and, and familiar with mapping, you know, these real life use cases to the DHIS2 terms. On the, on the third day, on Wednesday, um, we will uh, walk you through creating a tracker program from start to finish, okay? Um, so we'll kind of work together on this, where we'll kind of create the program and allow you to kind of take part in also creating um, your own program as an example, um, to just make sure everyone is able to kind of work through these concepts um, as we go through the session. On day four, um, we will allow you to work from start to finish on your own tracker program. Okay, so we have a, an assignment um, for that, and we'll be around, we'll make, make sure that there's plenty of support if you have questions or if you're kind of stuck somewhere. Um, we'll go over the, the kind of assignment in more detail on that day, all right? On day five, uh, uh, we're going to look at user roles and sharing and user groups. Now, these concepts are quite closely linked. Um, they allow you to kind of provide, you know, different levels of access um, to your programs um, and your data within those programs. And, and we want to try and discuss this um, a little bit so people are kind of aware of what can be done. Uh, and discuss some of the kind of template uh, user roles and typical user groups we would use um, and how to set those up and, and you know how this affects kind of you know access to your programs and so all right and hopefully you know that stuff you know sharing in particular that concept should be a little bit familiar i hope for for most of you all right um on uh, day six so next monday um, we will be looking at program access levels and relationships um, so the program access levels concept, it might be a new concept for many of you, and that's completely fine. Um, we'll describe that a little bit more um, when we get into the session itself. And then the relationships is just kind of creating um, relationships between um, two different tracker programs, for example, um, like a mother to child relationship or, um, you know, something like this. And we'll discuss kind of the implications of that a little bit, a little bit more on that day. Okay. Um, day seven, eight, um, day seven and eight are kind of, uh, we're really focusing on these two separate concepts and we will spend a fair amount of time. And, and similar to the way we work back and forth with the tracker program, we're going to kind of have the same principle here with program rules and program indicators. So program rules, they allow you to introduce things like validation in your data collection tools, um, allow you to introduce different logic to hide and show fields and then do kinds of all kinds of other things. Um, so we'll discuss this um, on, on day seven and we'll work together once again. So we'll present concepts to you, we'll allow you to try it. Um, and, and work through that in a little bit more detail. Okay. And the same thing for program indicators. So this concept um, allows you to kind of create um, aggregated values uh, or counts or averages or things of that nature um, from your tracker data, right? 
and we'll work together once again. It might seem like a lot of time, um, but we'll be working back and forth. We will have a break in between the session as well. All right. On uh, day nine, on the next Thursday, um, we will discuss program notifications um, a little bit and, and just kind of how these work in practice. Um, you know, basically allowing you to send out notifications based on data that is entered um, into your program. Um, and then we will discuss a bit on implementation considerations. So just, uh, you know, uh, considerations like scaling up, performance issues with large scale tracker systems. Um, we'll get a little bit of feedback from, you know, our colleagues in Sri Lanka and, uh, and the university who have some experience in uh, working with these kind of large, larger systems and kind of making them work well. All right. Um, and then on day 10, we have an exam. Okay, so there's uh, no, no other session allocated then. Um, we will review a bit of the, the material and then we'll allow you to perform the exam. All right, so the agenda, as you can see, has uh, covers a lot of different ground and it really builds upon the previous sessions. Um, so if you're not able to attend a session, it's okay, but hopefully you're able to kind of review that material um, because everything will be recorded and available on the online platform um, that we'll discuss shortly. Um, hopefully you're able to kind of go on there um, and access um, some of that material and review it beforehand because it, it's going to be kind of difficult to kind of build upon um, what you've learned the previous day. Um, we're working at a bit of a faster pace, I know, um, but uh, we, we will try to kind of keep everyone um, in, uh, together and keep uh, keep uh, the concepts kind of cl as clear as possible um, throughout the various days. All right. So if there are any questions um, about uh, the agenda, um, please let us know. Um, we will describe the topics uh, much more when we get into the content itself, of course, um, to, to kind of uh, give a better understanding of uh, what these all, all mean in case there are things that you're not exactly familiar with at this point in time, that's okay. Um, we will discuss those in more detail later on. So back to our presentation here. All right, so um, I just wanna talk a little bit about the certification process. Um, and how that works for everybody. So um, this course consists of both quizzes and assignments that contribute to your final grade. Um, a couple of them were noted on the agenda, but I'll get into that more, I'll discuss each one. Um, in order to pass, you need an overall grade um, of 70%. All right, so this is broken down into the following um, pieces of information. So attendance, um, worth 10%. Um, the assignment on creating a tracker program um, is worth 25%. Um, then there'll be assignments on user groups and sharing, program rules, program indicators, and program notifications. And those are all um, valued at 10% uh, of your final grade. And then we have the exam um, at 25%. So there's a lot of room here and none of the assignments are meant to trick you um, in any way, shape or form. Um, we try to keep them as straightforward as possible. Um, it's just kind of meant to ensure that you're able to kind of uh, you know, work with the concept and understand what we've shown you. Um, more so um, than being a, a strict grading, especially with some of these other areas where it's often quite easy, for example, program rules indicators. And when we get into those, it's quite easy to make mistakes. You know, I still make quite, quite a few mistakes, but it doesn't really matter. You can test them and make sure they work um, before you get them right. So, so it's not necessarily uh, meant to uh, penalize you in any way. So, so don't worry, as long as you keep up with everything, um, you, you'll, you'll be able to get through everything with no problem, all right? Um, it's just, it, we just do want to make sure that there are some systems in place to, to kind of um, gauge your progress. All right. And, and with the assignments, um, you will have extra time to perform them. Um, so you don't need to kind of rush to get them all done. Um, so the Academy ends on February 4th, but you will have until February 10th, uh, 10th um, so one week after the Academy ends, to submit all of the assignments. All right. So you have a little bit of extra time to work on them. Um, you don't have to kind of rush and try to get them done um, this week or next week. Um, you can submit them when you when you do have that time, All right? Um, we will then grade the assignments, um, the, the ones that need to be manually reviewed. So for example, the, the tracker, creating a tracker program assignment, there's, there's quite a few participants. Uh, we will need to manually review um, that submission um, and grade that to ourselves before we can provide you feedback. Um, so once this is done, um, you will also have the exam. Um, so the results from the exam and your overall grade uh, will be released. Um, and then you can access your certificate, okay? And, and we will announce this to you via the Slack channel. So um, if there are questions about how you obtain that certificate or anything like that, I hope this addresses um, some of those. You have to have that grade over 70%. Uh, we have to have everything graded. Um, so you, you won't receive it immediately, um, you know, right at the end of the academy, um, just because we wanna make sure everyone has submitted their assignments, we have a chance to go through um, and grade them all and, and then provide feedback to everybody on what they've done. 
All right. Um, but once that is done, you, you will then have access um, to your certificate and be able to, to download that. And, and we'll discuss that a bit more later on um, as we get closer to the end.